<laughs> I'm Jane Meadows, and I've got a secret. <laughs> I've got a secret. Starring Gary Moore. And how very nice it is to have Miss Jane back tonight, and she has a truly momentous secret to uh, show you a little later on in the show. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's welcome our regulars. Let's meet the members of our panel. Bill Cullen. And Betsy Palmer. And Henry Morgan. And Bess Meyerson, and that's the bus. You know, panel, I have forgotten how Jane laughs. How does it go again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the end of everything. It's just delightful. Isn't it wonderful? I heard you doing it, and I she knew I'd heard... She told me it's the new Jane tonight. I asked her where the chandelier earrings are. She said it's the new Jane, but she went, whoop! You know? <laughs> you know yes, it's, it's, it's our Jane. Yes. Now, before we meet our first contestant, there's one piece of old business. Last week, our special guest, Marion Lauren, decided that the panel should have a fair chance to guess her secret... And we told the panel that they had to keep on playing the game until they figured Marion's secret out, even if it took all night. Well, we, when we went off the air, the panel was still asking questions. Our studio audience was prepared to sit here half the night if necessary. But the, uh, you fooled us. Indeed, you did. You'd be interested to know that you spent a total of only 15 minutes asking questions before you guessed it. Now, we made a tape recording of the game from the time that we went <laughs> off the air. Now, you had established... The secret was going to cost you money. And then Bill Cullen picked it up. Roll the tape, Frank Heller, and let's listen. Is it more than a dollar? I, I think so. More than five dollars? Yes. No, faith. More than ten dollars? How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> more than ten dollars? Uh, up, up, on. Um, I'm going to have to lend you money again. <laughs> is it more than twenty dollars, Miss Lloyd? At $20. $20. $20. We are going to... All right, so we go to Betsy, who I think has it. I are we to... going to pay for the sound effects? Yes, yes. 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 Yes.
Petty Officer Edmund Busby, it is a great honor to present you with this award, which is emblematic of the highest Navy standards of personal achievement. Your exemplary action in overcoming the most formidable challenges conceivable provides a source of pride and inspiration to all Navy men. You are to be commended for the initiative, skill, and dedication which were evident in your attainment of this coveted award. On behalf of the United States Navy, I take pleasure in presenting this trophy for your great contribution to the welfare and morale of the American sailor. Congratulations Thank and well done. that pretty thing right down there. Boy, what a beautiful thing. You ought to be very proud, as I'm sure you are. I am, very much. That's a magnificent trophy. Will you tell our audience now what you did to earn it? Oh, that's my secret, Gary. Oh, that's your secret. All right, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it to the folks at home. It concerns something that Mr. Busby did, and we'll start the questioning with Bill, please. Mr. Busby, the thing you did, was it the kind of a thing that normally a man in, uh, that holds your rank in the Navy might do? Mm. I, think the, I, think the, I think the normal fellow of his rank mm. might not accomplish this. Would it more normally, and excuse the question, is just because of, I know the way the, the tenor of this show takes, would it more normally, sir, be done by a lady? Not especially, no. Did it have anything to do with your commissary job, food, uh, as it were? Yes. Have to do with... $20 down and $60 to go, and we go to Miss Betsy. Better explain, Gary, why Bill knows that it's commissary. <laughs> Bill, why do you know it's commissary? Because at the beginning of the show, he identified himself as a petty officer in a commissary department. Didn't you? Please say you did, because the way things are now... <laughs> First Henry is that Bill was listening and you weren't. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's the nicest answer I ever heard. <laughs> well, all right, no, he, he identified himself as such. Now, Betsy. Um, is this something, some improvements that you made on food so that, um, that would be to the betterment of your fellow sailors? Mm, yes. Um, it, is it something that helps them, that no, ordinary, is it something to keep them from getting seasick or to eat while they are seasick? Mm, no, while you're seasick. It has nothing to do with mal de mer. Forty dollars down, forty dollars to go now, Henry. Oh no, uh, I, I was just going to explain that. You know, there was a story about a man who fell overboard uh, in San Diego. Come on, yes, it was in Time magazine. I miss, I miss, Come yeah, on. Time. All right, I know. I'm just nice. But I'll go ahead and wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sixty dollars down and twenty dollars to go, and we go to Best Myers. Yes. <laughs> and what I was going to say was. <laughs> You may, if you like. Let me see. Uh, Ed, may I call you Ed? Did it have anything to do with cooking or preparing the food? Yes. It did, an actual cooking of it. Um, did you create some special diet? No. Uh, is it the amount of time you spent cooking it? No. What you cooked? Mm, yes. Yes? Uh, was it in a specific department? Meat or vegetable, something mm, like that? Yes. Thank you. All right, panel, we have blown Turkey? it. Now, mind you, this is a serious award. It is made annually, and I would like to have, I'd like to read it to you. It says here, Operation Bean Soup, for concocting the best bean soup in the U.S. Navy. <laughs> Mr. Busby holds a cook's rating. He submitted his recipe, and he won the annual competition that was open to all enlisted men and officers in the Navy stationed all over the world. It's an important event. As you saw, the award is traditionally presented by an admiral. Now, incidentally, anybody who wants the recipe, get your pad and pencil, because we're about to have a go at it. Good. Uh, Mr. We asked Mr. Busby to cook up some of his soup for you, panel, since we knew you wanted to taste this delightful Epicurean creation. So will you open the curtains, please? Now, Mr. Busby, if you'll serve the soup to the panel, I'll ask that the recipe be flown in. There you go. You go serve the soup. And here comes the recipe. Do we write that down? You just go ahead and ignore it. I'll talk to the ladies out here. First, you soak two cups or one pound of navy beans in water overnight, enough water to cover the beans. Next morning, you drain and put the beans in three quarts of water. 
Add one and a half pounds of ham, the butt end, a half a teaspoon of celery salt, one eighth teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of monosodium glutamate, and cook approximately two and a half hours or until the beans are tender. Then remove the ham and grind it. Add one medium minced onion to the soup, cook, cook approximately one half hour longer or until the soup begins to thicken. Then put the ground ham back into the soup and serve immediately, garnishing it with dried parsley leaves and Parmesan cheese croutons. This serves six people. Panel, how's it taste? Excellent. It's excellent. No, no joke. I want you to know that this young man has been here all day cooking that soup for you. I actually mean. Mr. Busby, congratulations. Your Winston you and your money are waiting for you off stage, but certainly we want you to have your special citation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now, may we have our next contestant, please? Will you come in, sir? Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is, sir, and where you're from? Charles I. Blood, Kansas City, Missouri. This is Mr. Blood, and he is from Kansas City, Missouri. And by the way, panel, you might be interested to know that Mr. Blood writes a daily column for the Kansas City Star. Now, sir, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we will show it to those avid folk out there. Here we go. Panel, Mr. Blood's secret concerns something that he has done. We'll start the questioning, I think, with Bess, please. Mr. Blood, this thing that you did, did you do it when you were a young boy? No. A young uh, adult. Sir, may I interject here? May I say that uh, the secret as expressed is a continuing action, and part of it was when you were a young boy, wasn't it? Well, it, uh, it, uh, uh, I know the things that happened there. You know. It started when you were quite a young man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, was this a physical thing? In other words, was there actual physical action involved? Uh, nothing except, uh, well, you, whatever. Uh, you right. showing up for work, huh? Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. But it was a mental activity. Yeah. Mental activity. Did it take place in Kansas City? Did it start there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you... All right, $20 down, $60 to go. We go, please, to Bill Cullen. Mr. Blood, would, <clears throat> would we know today about what you did? It ought to be plain to everybody. If you lived in Kansas City, you would certainly know. <laughs> uh, did it have anything to do with your work on the newspaper? Oh, yes. Forty down and forty to go. Betsy Palmer, please. Uh, Mr. Blood, are you still doing what you did? Yes, ma'am. It has something to do with your column, then, that you write? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it something that, um... Well, is it the column? That you have written the same column? Is it a, um, the kind of column that we're looking for? No, that wouldn't be the... Uh, it has something to do with it. Of it course, has something but to do that with is it. not the entire experience. No, yes. $60 down, 20 to go. Henry Morgan, please. Well, is it something like this, Mr. Blood, that you have written this column every day for so many years? Yeah. yeah uh, I... Again, the column is part of a lengthier experience. The column itself has run for many years. All right, now, then, oh, then we'd have to know what kind of column, I imagine. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. uh, then is there another part? You have written the column and done something else every day for so many years. Well, uh, of course, I've, uh, for, uh, I've, written a, I've written a column only lately, and... Uh, Let's not give them any more information. <laughs> Oops, careful, careful. <laughs> Panel, I told you that Mr. Blood is a columnist for the Kansas City Star. His column is called 40 Years Ago Today. However, his column could be called 75 Years Ago Today because Mr. Blood has been working for the same newspaper for 75 years. <laughs> Furthermore, he's still at it, and he goes to the office every single day and writes his column. Mr. Blood, may I ask how old you are, sir? I was... 89 uh, the, uh, uh, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. That means that he started working for the newspaper when he was 14 years old. 
What was the very first thing that you did for the newspaper, sir? Well, the very first thing I did was, prior to that even, was uh, uh, to sell, uh, sell papers on the street. Well, actually sell them on the street. Yeah, well, yeah. after that, Mr. Blood became yeah. a leg man for a reporter, a copy boy, a reporter himself, eventually city editor. Mr. Blood, what are some of the memorable stories that you can recall having covered? Uh, well, I, of course, the, the uh, Spanish-American War and uh, the... Uh, San Francisco earthquake and uh, uh, the con burning of Convention Hall. These things are no longer yesterday's newspaper story. These things are now history, are they not? No, yeah, they are history now. That's the... I asked Mr. Blood early in the evening, I said, what is the biggest story? He said, you never know, because when you cover the story, when you've been doing it for 75 years, you have no way of knowing how big it is eventually going to be. You know, you, you cover it as your line of duty, go home, do your next day's work, and the first thing you know, 25 years later, what was once that day's story is now history books. Just a uh, line. Mr. Blood's 75th anniversary of journalism was recently celebrated by the National Journalism Fraternity, Sigma Delta Chi, which incidentally is celebrating its own 50th anniversary this year. So, Mr. Blood, congratulations to you, sir. Your Winstons and your money will be waiting off stage for you. Many, many happy returns to the day. We had dinner together last night. He's a charming man. I just, I just met him then. Panel, I'm going to have to ask you, please, to leave the premises. Do not take your blindfolds with you. We'll make it as brief as possible. I frequently say I would like to have you meet our special guest. I can tonight say special with a special kind of emphasis, because even though she has left our panel as of last spring to move to California with uh, her husband, Steve Allen, it is a great joy to welcome back, for tonight only, unfortunately, Jane Meadows. I will tell you in front of millions what I told you only to your own lonesome self when I first saw you this evening. I have never seen you look as well. Oh, Gary, you darling. Well, it's Quite so serious. nice to see you and everybody again, and you look very well. Thank you. I'm reasonably pooped. Yeah. Uh, you are coming next door with us after the show for the little reunion kind of get-together. Oh, I wouldn't you? miss it for the world. I'd love nothing better than to meet with the gang and reminisce over the seven years that I was on the show. Because uh, you know, Gary, I remember everything about this show. I remember all the tricks that you pulled on me. I remember things like, let me see, I remember the night you had us learn to do the hula hoop. Yeah, we did that. And then I remember the night we tested those monstrous reducing machines. Yeah. Well, we'll there'll be a lot of things to talk about next door after the show, but I'm kind of worried about, about one thing. What's that? Uh, Bess Meyerson. You know, Bess may be a little lost at this party because, well, she's only been with us since last spring when yes. you left, and she missed out on some of the gags that we played on you and the rest of the panel. And it's a shame that she doesn't have the same happy memories. You know? Happy memories? Yes. I have a few happy memories of the show. I have one very happy memory. I don't know whether you remember or not, uh, the night you put a white mouse under my chair. Oh, sure. I Wait remember. a minute. <laughs> Surprise. It okay. Isn't <laughs> I remember the night that we had a snowball fight right up here on the stage yeah. with imported snow. Yeah. All oh, those wild things that we used to do. You know, it's a shame for poor old Bess that she's uh, missed out on all that fun. Well, we can, we can remedy that very simply. Tonight, you are going to give Bess an opportunity to catch up with the rest of the panel. Tonight, Gesundheit, madam. <laughs> Tonight, Bess will be required to do some of the things that the other panelists have done on this show. Is that okay with you? Oh, I think that's a wonderful idea, and I'm sure that Bess will appreciate your thoughtfulness. Oh, I'm sure she will. Like I did. <laughs> will you call the panel back in, please? I hope I didn't em embarrass you, ma'am. It just kind of came at a funny pause. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> I didn't mean to call attention to you. Panel, here they come. Ready? Lovely. Now, panel, as you take your seats, will each of you put on your blindfolds, with the exception <laughs> of Bess Meyerson, who will please bring her blindfold stage center. Wait, wait. Just the blindfold? Just the blindfold. <laughs> Everybody else, blindfolds on. You may each remove your blindfolds at the end of your particular period of questioning. Now, Bess. Yes, sir. You want to step center with me a little farther back? Now put your blindfold on. I will tell you, panel, and by the way, Bess, you're going to have the first questioning period, that uh, Jane's secret concerns something that she will be doing during the questioning period. And Jane, do you want to start? All right, Gary, I'd 
starting up to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, Bess, if you will, before we start the questioning period, put yourself in my tender hands, and I will not harm you. Huh? Uh, now, you don't move. A young man is going to grab your other arm, and you're oh, going to step nice. up onto a platform. One. There you go. Now, one or two little more steps, and a much higher platform. <laughs> much higher platform. <laughs> There you go. Is some kind of a scaffold or something? <laughs> You're not to be hung. Now, best turn around and face the audience. That's a little more. That's it. Now, hands up and elbows like up. This. There we are. There you go. Thank you, young man. All right, you may start your questioning, Bess. Remember, it's something that Jane is doing, so ask your questions of Jane. Are you already, Bess? I'd like to know what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, am I allowed to disclose the kind of feelings I'm having now? I mean, well, this one. <laughs> no, don't give the, uh, don't give the panel oh, any hints. Jane, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm not doing a thing. I, I, you're not? Well, uh, Jane, are you moving this? Well, uh, Gary, if I ask any questions, I'll have to reveal what's happening. I know no, there's no. a drawing board over there. Was that a drawing board near the uh, desk? An artist's easel? Yes. No, not as it is being used tonight. Oh, it isn't. Are you, you're not drawing anything, are you? Or no, making I'm any not. Signs? Are and you I'm standing not... up? Yes, I am standing up, Beth. This is nice. She is standing up, and Beth, you may remove your blindfold now and there. <laughs> All righty. All righty. Say nothing, if you please. And just move on down yes, with please. us. Now, stand there and hold on to uh, uh, this stanchion here while we uh, get ready for our next one. All right, gentlemen, remove it. We now call, turn our attention to Bill Cullen, who gets the next questioning period. But before we do that, we have uh, a little explanation to do. <laughs> We hope that you will observe, please, Miss Myerson. All right, now, Bill Cullen, it's your turn to question. Oh, do I stay here? Oh, stay right where you are. Oh. Uh, does, uh, Jane, does yes. what happened to Bess have anything to do with what is now out? Something was taken away and something was brought back in. Uh, yes, it does, Bill. Um... Uh, does it have anything to do, Jane, with while you were with us on the show, which was many, many happy years, as far as we're concerned? You mean what I'm doing now? Does it have anything to do with the show? Yeah. Uh, yes, it does. Uh-huh. Because I heard a machine when... I heard a machine when Bess was up there. Yes. It sounded like a... What do you call them? Exercise type machine, was it one? Oh, of... it did? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you can remove your blindfold, Bill. Say nothing now. If I remember. $40 down <laughs> to go. $40 to go, and so we go, please, to <laughs> Betsy Palmer. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Ugh, <laughs> Betsy. No, I didn't. Uh, need that. Um, did some of these, are all these things that are happening individually? Things that happened to you, Jane, while you were a panelist on the show? Uh, e you're close, Betsy. Really? And you're yes. making everybody else go through them now? Uh, no, that is not right. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> $60 down. Oh, I remember. And you were so close to right, we're going to have to go for it. Yes, uh, Henry, take off your, uh, your blindfold. What we were trying to do was we were trying to give you all of the sweet memories that Jane was <laughs> able to pile up over a series of years. But if you'll step over here, dear, we'll skip the hula hoops. There is one more stunt that the panel went through that you have not participated in. <laughs> Be our guest. Oh, boy. Watch it. Hold it. Take her off. Take her off. <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotton production. Miss Myers is down by Sorrell. This is John Cannon speaking. 
cut short tonight's performance, but it turned out that the cow had no secret. I'm Jane Meadows, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret. Starring Gary Moore. And how very nice it is to have Miss Jane back tonight, and she has a truly momentous secret to uh, show you a little later on in the show. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's welcome our regulars. Let's meet the members of our panel. Bill Cullen. And Betsy Palmer. And Henry Morgan. And Bess Meyerson, and that's the bus. You know, panel, I have forgotten how Jane laughed. How does it go again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the end of everything. It's just delightful. Isn't it wonderful? I heard you doing it, and I she knew I'd heard... She told me it's the new Jane tonight. I asked her where the chandelier earrings are. She said it's the new Jane, but she went, whoop! You know, <laughs> know yes, it, it's, it. it's our Jane. Yes. Now, before we meet our first contestant, there's one piece of old business. Last week, our special guest, Marion Lauren, decided that the panel should have a fair chance to guess her secret... And we told the panel that they had to keep on playing the game until they figured Marion's secret out, even if it took all night. Well, we, when we went off the air, the panel was still asking questions. Our studio audience was prepared to sit here half the night if necessary. But the, uh, you fooled us. Indeed, you did. You'd be interested to know that you spent a total of only 15 minutes asking questions before you guessed it. Now, we made a tape recording of the game from the time that we went <laughs> off the air. Now, you had established... The secret was going to cost you money. And then Bill Cullen picked it up. Roll the tape, Frank Heller, and let's listen. Is it more than a dollar? I, I think so. More than five dollars? Yes. Face more than ten dollars? How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> more than ten dollars? Uh, up, up, on. Um, I'm going to have to lend you money again. <laughs> is it more than twenty dollars, Miss Lloyd? At $20. $20. $20. We are going to... All right, so we go to Betsy, who I think has it. I are we to... going to pay for something? Yes, we are. 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 Yes, we are